content. We appreciate you making us your listen, or at least one of your listens each and every day. So here we are right here. I got main event Mike in the background. What's going on, main event Mike? Oh, sorry, I'm late. I was busy drag racing Jordan Addison. Oh, oh. Okay, how'd that work? He won, didn't he? he yeah, he was doing 140 and a 50. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Look at this thing right here. I, I mean, I I can't believe it. I When I look at this, like, I've been in the NFC North, the huddle, and 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 I, and I see these guys, just br these Viking fans just brushing this under like it, it ain't no big deal. Is this a big deal, Mike? I don't think it's that big of a deal. What's really uh, disturbing is that the guy just signed his rookie contract last week and he's already driving a Lamborghini. Uh, and so all of this got me, you know, I didn't know that much about this guy. I just know he's the next great, you know, USC wide receiver coming out. So I went and looked at his highlight reel on YouTube. Absolutely nothing uh, exciting there. Uh, they're against Rice against uh temple i mean these these nobody schools he's catching balls uh out of the backfield no catches that really impress me he's not very big he's only six foot tall uh, this might be a bust in the making bro i mean <laughs> when you talk about how high they took him and you look at all the dis excellent defensive players that were on the board when they took jordan addison and the state of this minnesota defense i, I think this this speeding thing is just a blip on the radar. It's just a kid being a kid, but Hey, I think they got, the Vikings might've really missed, missed with this one. Uh, I didn't see anything in the highlights that, that impressed me. What about you, Jeremy? What do you think of Jordan Addison? I think he's Henry Ruggs 2.0. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> I mean, anybody that's going to buy a Lamborghini and be a weenie and do a 140 and a 55 just to show off because he can, it, it's idiotic. That is reckless endangerment, which is a driving felony. Wow. I mean, 140 mile an hour. I mean, that was the thing that hit me because I know a lot of friends of mine that like to go fast on their motorcycles and they like to go fast in their cars and stuff like that. And I'll tell you what, 110 miles an hour is fast. That is okay. fast, fast. That is like, wow, I'm going 110, 120 mile an hour, 140 mile an hour. Like you need to go to like a racetrack with your millions of dollars, rent the whole thing out and then do your 140. What if he would have hit somebody? Exactly Do my point. That's why I said exactly Henry Ruggs 2.0. Yeah, I, I mean, that's uh, – he's lucky. I mean, he's lucky that he just got caught. I, honestly, if you're a Viking fan, you should be happy that the, the police arrested him and that he got what he got without killing somebody because he may never play again, you know, I mean, like, like Henry Ruggs if he does hurt somebody. Uh, Jalen Carter on line one. <laughs> My gosh, guys. And and here we that are. That happened in college before he was ever a part of the NFL. Uh, you say what you want. Doing it when you're in college is way different than doing it once you have your big money. Right. But he wasn't as lucky as Jordan Addison and, and somebody did die. Right. No, I'm getting that. I'm just, I'm, I'm not saying he was lucky for it because that's wrong. Yeah, so that's a that's a definitely a good comparison right there to Jalen Carter because that's that, that's what happens. And then there you are. He he didn't even lose that much because he was he ended up getting picked, uh, you know, high by the Philadelphia. Was it ten, pick number ten? Jalen Carter twelve or something like that. Uh, but, pick number nine. They traded with up with Chicago. Remember. Right. So, so pick number, I mean, he ends up not losing that much money because of the talent and everything, but you can really see why Brad Holmes would stay away from some of these guys that have the question marks, you know, you want the, the guys that are going to contribute, not going to give you problems. And then, you know, so, Jamison Williams online too. So, um, <laughs> so, I mean, is this even compare? to the Jamison Williams thing? Because that's what I've been, I mean, throwing here on this NSC North, the huddle. They seem to say, oh, yeah, well, now you're brushing the Jamison Williams thing underneath the rug. It's like, no, we're not really no. brushing it underneath the rug, but 
this Look is way the, worse. Here's here's the comparison. One guy bet in a hotel room on the road on his college football team, right? I don't even. I think it was basketball, but yeah, no, it was college football because it was, was it? during the season. Had to be college football. So either way, it was college, right? He's betting okay. on college, which was an obscure rule that they didn't explain properly because 80% of the NFL veterans and rookies don't know it. Yet this guy did something that everybody knows is bad. You don't drive 140 on a regular road. 55 miles an hour is not an expressway. 55 miles an hour is not, you know, a major, it's not the Autobahn where it's legal. You're talking about a two, maybe a four lane road doing 140 miles an hour in a 55 mile an hour zone. What if a kid walked out from a house on the side of that road? Yeah, there you go. That, that That's it. What do you, I mean, can you compare it to Jamison Williams, Mike, somehow? Uh, no, but I think that, um, I think that there's some validity to that. Maybe because it's a Lions player, we're a little quicker to poo-poo it. Whereas we're going to harp on a little more because it's a Vikings player. Maybe there's something to that, but I, I'm not really into this hypothetical. What if a kid had come out and what if, and what if, and what if the fact is uh, the, what really concerns me is there going to be a suspension coming down, Jeremy, would there be a, would the league rule some sort of suspension for this? I mean, this is conduct policy all the way. Right. This is conduct unbecoming the shield, which on an average, when you're talking about PEDs and somebody does this and somebody does that, as long as you're not in a domestic violence or something, you'll probably see three to four games. Really? You think three to four games for a speeding ticket? It's more than a speeding ticket. If yeah, you're it's... able to be arrested, that means it's reckless endangerment of human lives is what it's considered if you're arrested. And that definitely would fall under the purview of the uh, league's conduct policy. So what did you say? Three to four games we could yep. be in? Without yep. George Edison? Yeah. Yeah, I I would hope that it was going to be more than that. I mean, I, and not just because I'm a Lion fan. If, if NFL it's wants to... Send a message. The NFL, if they want to send the message, they're sending a message that they uh, care more about gambling than they do people's lives. And, and uh, 140 mile an hour is not a speeding ticket, Michael. 140 mile an hour is attempted murder ah. on paper. Uh, have you ever went, uh, Mike, have you ever went 140 miles an Not hour in your fast. life? I've done 120, Mike, but never one. Jeremy, have you ever went 140 miles an hour in your lifetime? Once. Uh, uh, of course you have. All right. Top fuel, so, top fuel dragster, uh, roller coaster, Cedar Point. <laughs> okay. So, 140. So, okay. That's it. So, <laughs> that is that is a safe environment where they 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 use engineers to engineer your safety doing that 140 but not in a car so if we're going to brush this under the rug as a speeding ticket maybe it's not as high as attempted murder but you know if he did hit somebody it would be you know a manslaughter murder so i mean attempted murder Let's say I've done 133, says Garrett. I mean, that's crazy. Good for you. Can Good you for you? Can, can you control your car? Like th this yes. is okay. I, I, th there you go. Go ahead, Jeremy. You can control it at that speed. <laughs> the problem is you have tunnel vision. You cannot see what's beside you. It looks like you're dri driving down a tunnel the whole time. Everything's a blur from the side. I, I feel like every time I say something, I got like a Jeremy extension that's like, yep. And then that, and then and, and I get like an add on word right there. Um, Calvin says that did JMO what did what JMO do would affect other people? Not in the least. So if we're comparing it to the two, like JMO is going to get six game suspension because the NFL cares more about gambling and their. Uh, squeaky clean uh, image than they do safety of other people. So if this kid only gets three games for endangering people's lives, doing 140 mile an hour, I guess what Mike says, a speeding ticket, then, I mean, I'm going to have a problem with their. I'm, I'm sorry, Russ. I, I love you to death, my brother, but we are just not going to agree on this. What Jameson Williams did is puts the integrity of the game at risk. And, and if you lose the integrity of the game, it's over, 
people will not. I mean, if they believe for one minute that the game is fixed and NFL is trying to nip it in the bud before it gets that, because they do have these gambling partners, these casinos who are giving them millions and millions of dollars to sponsor the NFL. So the NFL has to be hardlined on this, no exceptions. And, and maybe Jamison Williams was an exception because he was the first one when the news broke. Oh, that was the headline, right? So maybe they used Jamison Williams as an example. But I, I think that this is – I think that what Jamison Williams in the eyes of the league is just as important as what Jordan Addison did. And uh, I think that the suspension should be similar. I, you know, Mike, as an advocate for the NFL, dude, you did a fantastic job right there. And thank you for proving my point in such an eloquent way. Now, as we move on right here, let's get into the real football talk right here and get back into. So the the Lions place Hooker on the NFI list, and that just means that he won't be able to practice with the team. So give me some thoughts on that, Michael. Oh, just uh, I mean, he, he's not eating up a roster spot. Uh, I mean, he's he's still rehabbing his. His clear date is September 1st by his own doctor and his own admission. So, I mean, we're sitting here at near the end of July. I think this is a non-story. Okay. I mean, well, I mean, it it's a story to the point where he does go onto the list and it does silence the people that are like, you know, some of the Canadians that I know think that he's going to, you know, compete for the week one starting job. And, oh. and this definitely like, like, takes all those Homer takes and throws it right out the window. Now we're in reality. He starts on the NFI. It's kind of like Jamison Williams last year. Oh yeah. He could be ready by week one. Oh, you know, those ACLs, they can get real, you know, you can heal from them really, really fast. And then it's like, okay, he starts on six week pup. Okay. Now that is out the window. We ain't talking about that nonsense anymore. I mean, he had an ACL tear. We have Jared Goff. There's absolutely no reason to even get this guy out there practicing. So there you I go. Mean, look at the presser Dan Campbell did right after we drafted him. This is a red shirt year for Hendon Hooker. We want him to be completely healthy before he touches the field in a game situation. Exactly. That says everything you need to know. Yep. yep. Before yep, me... in November, we're only sitting at July. It, it's expected he'd be on the NFI list at this time. <laughs> hey, oh, <Darren. laughs> you know i'm trying to get in here and and look at some of these and we did just change the we can go right back to the to the car thing says uh garrett says that he didn't hit anything um he also says it's a car and it's made to go fast and uh garrett also says professional drivers don't have tunnel vision he's L -L -L. not a professional driver driver um, Jason says that, uh, it's made to go fast, but it doesn't mean should be driven fast. Mm -hmm. So what we got people on both sides of this, uh, anytime you drive, you are endangering people. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh my God. Hey, Garrett, you have to be a Viking fan. Like it, in order to just brush that underneath like that. No, he wasn't driving fast. He was driving ludicrous speed, ludicrous speed. Have you ever seen what's that movie? Uh, Spaceballs. Uh, Spaceballs. They've, they've gone flannel. He went flannel. <laughs> he, he went. <laughs> this isn't fast. This is redonkulous fast. Good one. Jerry. <laughs> this is redonkulous fast. I mean, you are it, when you drive thirty-five mile an hour, you're endangering people. Oh my god. Okay. One guy's got it right. Take it to the track. Like we said, take it to the to track. It. What integrity if he doesn't gamble on the NFL? Please explain this to me. I, I will explain that to you. Gambling is a slippery slope. If you, you I, I'm a recovered gambling addict, I can tell you right now that once it starts with a college basketball game, it starts to snowball, uh, especially if you get in the hole and you keep trying to get yourself out. Um, it, it, it's absolutely, it, I mean, his question is what integrity? If he doesn't gamble on the NFL, it's gambling in general affects the integrity of the league. We can't even have a hint of I mean, look what happened to the NBA when the when the referees got caught, 
you know, uh, fixing games. Uh, it, it took 10 years for the audience to come back. They have since left again, but that was due to the retirement of all the superstars. But I think, uh, come on, Calvin, you, you've got to admit that if you knew that players were allowed to be out there betting on sports, it could encroach on the integrity of the game. Can't deny it. But and that's are. fair. But I, they I, are. I, that's the bad part about it. Because if they're at home and do the same damn thing, it doesn't co- have a problem with it. They don't have a problem with it. You see, it's it's a kind of a hypocrisy. It is. I, that's I, I, point. And, and I've been of the I've been of the stance that they should ban all gambling, no matter where you are, if you're an NFL player. I'm just saying you can't have it one way and then expect players to act another. It, I understand gambling on the NFL, 100. That's the slippery slope, 100. Because th- that 100 affects the integrity of the game. Correct? Yes, but you're going to have sure. to. But what I'm saying is, if it's okay to be at home and bet on a college team. It shouldn't be no different if you're in your hotel room for the night on the road. That's what I'm getting at. I'm talking about the hotel room. I'm not talking about the practice facility, the parking lot. I'm not talking about in the dome. I'm not talking about while you're in the locker room. I'm talking about your hotel room is considered your home on the road, right? That's where you go to bed. That's my point. And, and, you know, actually, this is really funny because Calvin – and everything that we're talking about here, actually the point of this is you're driving too fast. And to show you how Lion Fan operates right here, we immediately want to compare and say driving fast is worse than gambling. And all of a sudden we want to switch this thing around. And then Calvin says, okay, now we're, now we're talking about the gambling versus driving fast. And the thing is, is they're both bad. And honestly, in more danger, endangerment, the driving 140 mile an hour should be a worse crime than somebody betting on a a, a football game that isn't a NFL game in his hotel room. You notice that there's no... uh, It should be that way. No teams in Virginia, right? You know why? Because if you drive one mile an hour faster than 90 miles an hour on any road, it's a felony. And and that that's a big thing right there. Like that's where it does move from that speeding thing that you were talking about, Mike, where it's just a speeding ticket. Where is the line where it does go to endangerment? And it isn't just uh, uh, well, here's your you know one hundred and seventy five dollar fine for going over the speed limit. Where does it go? Oh, I'm putting you in jail. If it's a felony, he well, should get suspended for eight games. That's a felony. He was arrested. Is what it said. It didn't say he was cited. It said he was arrested on that. So well, he but, was arrested. That means he went to jail that night at 3 a.m. and had to be bailed out. Okay, that that that's fine. But we'll see what happens when it comes to what he's convicted for. Because they could just throw the whole thing out because of his stature or whatever. But no, like nobody like me or you could get away with going 140 mile an hour. No, no regular people that live regular lives could get away with that, but we can definitely get rid of, uh, get, uh, we could go into a hotel room and make a bet without getting arrested. I just noticed mm-hmm. the speedometer on my Silverado says 140. Yeah. <laughs> And you want to test it out. See, Mike's already thinking about the, uh, the, the the risk right there. The integrity of the game is NFL, not a, a college game. So that's going to the point of. I'd have to disagree with Lisa on that one uh, because integrity of the game, not not the pro game, not the college game, the game. I think we need to keep gambling out of sports and I, I agree with the Jamison Williams suspension. And I think it's it's uh, telling that they didn't appeal. They said they're not even going to think about appealing. They're just going to take it and move forward. Good for them, too. Good for them. The comment is that he wasn't on a highway. Is that important. it wasn't on a is important. Three in the morning, not many people are out. But on a local road, you can have... Ben come anytime he's lucky that it didn't happen. I, I mean, at, at three in the morning. So you're looking at three in the morning being a good thing because nobody is out there. No, that is not a good thing. When your first round 
draft pick that you invested millions in high draft capital is out. It's like those guys that are in the strip clubs at four o'clock in the morning. Going, <laughs> I didn't do it. I wasn't the one that fired the gun. What the hell are you doing in the strip club at four o'clock in the morning? Stop it, Keith. Thanks for the comment, Keith, and, and enlighten. I didn't know it was three o'clock in the morning. When you add darkness into going 140 in a 55 mile an hour zone, I think that, that, that even makes it worse. Yeah. Uh, but he, he looked at it like a good thing. Say hello to my little friend. Yeah. <laughs> Addison is just turning to training camp. I respect the dedication. I love <laughs> Barry. Yes. Yes. I love that one. Now that's the best defensive statement yet. You get you get a five on. I gotta give you a five bag on that one again. You ready? You like, you like, you like, you like, you like that. You get five on that one, Baze Jaron. I that is that that is good. So uh, if, if <laughs> right. And we're looking at a three to four game suspension. Uh, if J J Justin Jefferson wasn't getting double or triple team before, he certainly will be <laughs> in those first three or four games. Well, they still got Hawkinson and a blocking tight end. So don't. KJ Osborne <laughs> and Alexander Madison. <laughs> Look out. Look that out. Explosive. That sounds good. Uh, Jiren says, yeah, it was very dumb of him. And he's lucky that he didn't. That he didn't get arrested. Well, according to Jeremy, he did get arrested. According to what I let me pull it up again. I, yeah, I, please I check that. We, we we don't care that we're not right. We we just love talking football. So for feel free to correct us out there because we're not gonna we're not gonna like break any real time news. And and if we do, you're you're lucky on this network because we're not. That's not what we do. We just like to make fun right. of all the dumb shit that happens. <laughs> And then when it comes to our team and like, oh, wow, Jameson got suspended. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. So, that, uh, but it's okay when it happens to our team and we can brush underneath the rug. Oh, it's just gambling. <laughs> oh, no, it's just 140. <laughs> like <laughs> a, a Clark Gable drop. You are the maestro, my man. A uh, gone with the wind drop. Unbelievable. Uh, yes. Uh, you like yeah. that. You like, you like, you like that. That gets a triple. That one gets Thank a you, triple. Sure thing. <laughs> he was cited for speeding and reckless driving. Reckless driving is the key. Reckless driving I is not, not. Reckless driving is the key, though. Reckless driving is not your normal ticket. Reckless driving is for excessive speed. It's for putting other people's lives in danger. It is considered yep. a grade one misdemeanor in some states. It's a felony. Yeah, well, I well, just so we know, it does not say that he was arrested, right? He was cited. cited. Okay, so we are sorry for putting so out. I, in, somebody incorrect. said he was arrested, so I said that's why I we, went with it. We somebody said he was arrested, but we are sorry that we put out wrong information. We apologize for wrong? that. But we're not. Put that on the calendar. Put it on the calendar. Did, I, I did, think Jamie's wait, been wrong make a twice mistake? in his life. In no, his I, life, I made I made a few mistakes. <laughs> He's twice in his life, and we have witnessed one of them. And it's right here. All right, we have four. We got a bear fan. Yes, Woody. Woody is in the house. What is What's your up? take on Jordan Addison driving 140 in a 55? Thank you, Jerry. Well, we're, weren't we just talking about uh, what did that Vikings fan that came on the other day says? Oh, we have Addison to take. You know. JJ, if he gets covered, yeah, Addison will. He, <laughs> I, had to, you know, I know it's like when they get when they get signed in the NFL or pro sports and stuff like that, they think they can break the freaking law and get away with it. Oh, I'm an athlete; I can get away with it. No, you won't. They look at you more. The police. I used to be a policeman. We look at the athletes more that want to break the law and stuff like that. So, well, what are you gonna do? You know. <laughs> So Tina oh, says that that's, uh, that's great. You used to be a policeman. Did you ever have to cite anyone for driving 140 miles an hour? <laughs> no, maybe maybe on a uh, Kawasaki uh, freaking bike or something like that. But I, what kind of car did he have? Did he have like a Lamborghini Lam or a Fiat? Exactly, he, it's a Lamborghini. And I say that because he's a weenie for driving it that fast. Wow. <laughs> well, don't so take, Woody, I'll Woody, take it out on him. <laughs> What's that? Do you live in Illinois? No, I live in Pennsylvania. So in Pennsylvania, if you're doing 140, do you know what kind of infraction that is? Absolutely, that's a loss of a license for a year. If you uh, they could suspend your license 
if you're going 25 miles per hour over the speed limit. Wow. If, yeah. So that's a year of suspension there. Uh, here in Pennsylvania, if you're going 25, they can suspend your license for a year. So imagine doing what the uh, triple, almost triple. He he's gonna be he's gonna be calling Uber to the uh, to the training camp. <laughs> <laughs> so. Oh, thank you, Woody. You've just given me so much material. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it's 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 just. Uh, it's sad, but it's, you you deserve it. I mean, uh, I mean, even if it was a bear that did that, I I like you, I call you a a freaking idiot for doing that shit. You know what I mean? It's, it's just dumb, but you know, he better, uh, pipe up, go to those, uh, classes, go to the court trials when he has them and stuff like that. And, uh, hopefully he gets excused for those days. So, so so Woody, uh, what would be like, for for this one forty, what 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 could be his worst that that he could get? I mean, could he see jail time in this, or is that just kind of? Uh, it it depends there? on it depends on the on the laws and stuff like that. If he had any more inf- infractions and stuff like that, because I like for example in Pennsylvania, if you get two DUIs within ten years, you go to jail for ninety days. So okay. it, it's it di- it's different with states, but if it, it's in Pennsylvania. He could be doing some jail time for uh, doing that. It, the, you know, especially if you're going through, if you're doing a like 45 in a in a school zone, they'll suspend right. your license. They won't even ask you twice about that. Yeah, but I, I'm I'm gonna have to like pump my own brakes on here on how serious that I, I mean it is serious, but I'm gonna kind of lean more towards uh, main event Mike's side here a little bit after you know hearing you and your. Uh, you know, in your experience as like, uh, you know, knowing about the police officers and stuff like that. So, yeah, being cited and losing your license that I, I don't think that I'm going to, you know, die on a hill for mm-hmm. for, for all I, of that, like giving him a I'm, hard time. I'm a little different because I lost my son who went head on into a tree. He didn't see at 55 miles an hour because of a curve in the road at night. So I'm in a little different mood right now. So. I think this is absolutely horrid and atrocious. Right. No car is set up to keep your body or anyone else around you safe at 140 miles an hour. Yeah, the, the, what, what, there, there's no reason. There's no reason ever to be going that fast. Not, I, not I, in the United States. I, I mean, it, I mean, Jay, instead of instead of being an NFL athlete, go to NASCAR. You can do it, and it's legal. Or move to Germany and drive on the autobahn where there's no speed limit. Uh, yeah, but I um, I didn't know about that, Jeremy. I'm sorry for to hear that for your son. Yeah, I. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna sorry run over. Uh, I'm just gonna pop out for a second. I'm gonna go post on my Facebook. Jordan Addison's taking an Uber to training camp. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey, Mike! I already posted it in my in my uh. <laughs> on my chats too. So did you really all oh, crap. All right. No, no, just all right. ju- hey, just under Mike the Bear fan, I did it under oh, House okay. Hall and stuff. No, so. well, nobody looks at that anyway, Woody. Ah, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ! There we go. Oh, oh, wait, we got a dubs in the in, in the back room. I didn't see that we had a second row right there. Welcome to the show, a dub. He's got a little bit of delay. That's all so Packers fans. All Packers fans have What's delays. Up, I don't know why. Hey, hey, Dub. <laughs> that is good. Well, so, what do you think about this uh, 140 mile an hour uh, nonsense here? <laughs> I already said in the comment he better off taking on a Fast and Furious role, rolling a movie if he's going to do that. <laughs> well, I think they already made the last uh, Fast and Furious. I think it was Fast Ten. So I don't, I don't know if Vin Diesel, or The Rock, are going to be making another one. <laughs> Jordan had enough to of take that up shit. the new role. <laughs> now yeah. I think there are plans to where they might have another one come out. So yeah, he, he's got they time. might have one in Minnesota now. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I saw your comment there, A Dub. That was but that was pretty me, good. Wow. Oh, so, we have so a, now. So now all the meme, yeah, all the meme then, gods need to get to work. Yeah, they're 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 on it. They're happy about this. <laughs> the, <laughs> See the one that Melvin put out with uh, Jordan Addison's face on Speed Racer? No. <laughs> no. Oh, oh, are we, go, are we going yeah, there now? Let me, I love it. 
Right. Let me see you know, if I can't Bernadis find that one. Bernadis has got to change his number to five. That was Speed Racer's number. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can't find that. I want to find that because that, that, that was a good one. I actually posted it up in the uh, in the I feature put, section. Messenger. Oh, my God. But uh, on the serious note, like, if you put people's lives in danger on the road by doing that shit, you deserve what you get. Plain and simple. Deserve what you get. Okay. The whole Speed Racer crew, we could do a meme. Right. And that little monk, that little monkey that was with Speed Racer will put Kirk Cousins' head on it. <laughs> Play action. <laughs> Play action fast. So there it I'll is. Call it. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Thank my you God. to Melvin G. For uh, uh, posting that, I just commented the- on that before too. <laughs> thank you, hey, thank you, Jesus, for posting that. We <laughs> Jesus, own, he did it. We have our own Detroit Jesus, and uh, and yep. every once in a while he blesses us with fantastic con- uh, c- content right there. So thank you, Detroit Jesus. We do have somebody else waiting in the lobby. It might be a first time guest right here. Are you Will Vogel? What's up? Is this Vogel? What's up? Welcome to the show. What's your name? Will Vogel. Uh, I'm really good friends with Jeremy. Jeremy is my mentor on many things. Said no. Oh, one. no. Hey, hey, hey. Don't, don't kiss ass on here, please. <laughs> no need. No I've need. Been, I've been helping him with <laughs> so podcasting you, and stuff. So you are a Lions fan if you're, if you're Jeremy's friend. I'm a Panthers fan, but Jeremy turned me into a Lions fan as well. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. But, you turn- Russell, uh, I had the funny comment, and Jeremy saw it. I said, you know how the Packers traditionally bike to training camp as, like, a tradition to bike with the public? Trade them to the Packers. Trade Addison to the Packers and be like, hey, try to go 140 miles per hour on this side. <laughs> 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 you like that? Hey, no, I'll give that. I'll give that one a three. You like, you like, you like that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> you know what? Well, we, de- hey, we definitely, we definitely, we definitely got to get a Vikings fan on here to see his intake on this. Right, any Viking, uh, any Viking. They're fan. defending it. They're defending it with words on. In the- uh, oh, I bet they are. But yeah, uh, see, thank you for having me. Don't on count the show. though. I can be on for ten minutes and then I've got to travel today. Cool. Did you did you talk to your mentor about that? You're not allowed to get off the show. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah, once you start, no, you can't stop. I agree. What Addison <laughs> did is like I don't know how to compare. It. I feel like it's like a lesser extent of big lesser extent of what Rugs did. You need to suspend the guy like at least seven games, in my opinion. At least seven games. Yeah, I, I think it should be like comparable because I think we're setting a bad example here. Cause I, I believe what Mike says about where you do have to draw this giant line in the sand and say, look, you can't cross this line. And I understand that. But when you're comparing these gambling suspensions with like guys who knock their girlfriend's head off of their shoulders or guys that are driving 140 mile an hour and breaking the law, I mean, it isn't illegal to gamble. It's against the NFL's policy to gamble. So it's not like they're going to go and give him a misdemeanor or have him, you know, go to probation and so go to on, gambling um, classes. Gosh, that's such so a great... So on Jeremy's show, we brought up gambling one time, and I feel like uh, how they do a symposium every year, and like, oh, what was it, Jeremy? 80% of guys didn't know that the whole gambling thing. I feel like you need to have a thing with like guys who've been recklessly driving, put them through a driver's safety course. And at the end of the course, just test them on their driving and say, Hey, we're going to put you through driver's ed again. Now, would they, now here's a quick, this is an honest question. Now, would they train you how to drive at 140 miles an hour? No. (laughs) If hey, if you want to drive 140 miles per hour, NASCAR and Formula One has jobs calling your name. I can't drive 140. Wow. Yeah, Uh, Russell, you sound hey, Russell, Russell, you sound just like Sammy Hagar, just to a T, baby. (laughs) Forty-five. 
So I have a question for Will. Uh, does Jeremy refer to you as Grasshopper or Padawan? Or like that? No, he should, but he doesn't. <laughs> or paint the um, fence. <laughs> no, you know what would be funny if someone got a Stefan Diggs. Let me ask you to wax on, wax off the car. That's all I'm asking. I'm sure it's dirty after 140. <laughs> so I think um, I think uh, someone needs to get a Stefan Diggs uh, Vikings jersey. Write um, Addison on it and add a zero to it because he wore 14. I, I think that's a great point, though, Russ. Jordan Addison broke the law. Jameson Williams did not. Aside yeah. from the NFL policy issue, one broke the law and one did not, and one got a six-game suspension. So if breaking the law is also against the NFL policy, that suspension should be bigger or at least the same as Jamison Williams now that we think about it and kick the idea around. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, like I said, like like I said, uh, being a former policeman, he he did break the law. If you, anything, anything that your license gets suspended or anything like that, you got to go to court trials, classes and stuff like that. Like I said, if if I was a policeman and I got caught speeding, I'd be fired because obviously I'm um, putting the, the city I was working in in danger. And plus, I won't be having my license and mainly I have to drive. So, I mean, does he get an Uber to training camp and practices? But if I was the coach, I would be or general manager, I'd be uh, suspending him and laying the law down. A I'd lot be of teams suspending team. him and be like, "Hey, you're going to be in a carpool with the backups." Yeah, practice squad. <laughs> you got to ride practice with KJ squad. Osborne. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I can see him on the team bus from the back. Does it say go any faster? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and walk faster than this. Come on. <laughs> no. Yeah, but the suspension no, is uh, suspension, suspension is due. Yeah, Mike suspend him to the school bus during the year with the, all the kids. Oh come yeah. on, another stop! <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's he so had, let's. He uh, had a four four forty and an eight one quarter mile. Well, speed <laughs> kills, like they say, you know, literally. They they love going fast. Mike says, changing subjects. The Lions will. Uh, the Lions will cut to a fifty three man roster. Who do you think? The practice squad makeup of the Lions be since so much potential has been given to the team. I think Jeremy. You know who I love? Mo. Go ahead. All right. Whoever All right. wants. To, yeah. Whoever yeah, wants to go. I, can I, go. I waited because I heard somebody start speaking. So um, go, go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, I think um, he was just saying, "Go ahead, a- Jeremy." <laughs> We have 20 uh, offensive linemen on this roster right now, so I have a feeling at least six of those practice squad spots will be that, just to have that added depth. Because we we do know injuries happen on the O-line. We also have about 11 defensive ends. You can only keep about, what, six? At the most. Yeah, so there's five more. That's 11 of the 13 spots right there. The other two, probably a quarterback and a wide receiver. I like what? that. That's a good call. That, so that's a good that, Jeremy. Uh, practice squad, you get 18, but you can protect six. Is that right? Four. You can protect four, four out of 18. Yeah, Is it 18 now? Because I thought it was still 13 total. Because last year we only had 13 on the practice squad each week. Four of them protected. Okay. That's nine Maybe unprotected. I'm asking you to confirm that. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it is an extension of the roster, and we used that a lot last year as, it, you know, as far as the Lions because we did have a lot of injuries going down a stretch, and you wouldn't know it because of all the wins, but we went through a lot of injuries last year down a stretch where you had, like, leading wide receivers like greats that you know of in the Bears camp, like Tom Kennedy. Oh, I'm sure that that rings a bell. Uh, yeah, and what and like Josh Reynolds and, and and these guys uh, that you don't know outside of the organization, but it's because the practice squad depth was was deep, and it is important that you hide some depth onto that. You so, know who I would love to see on the practice squad is um, uh, Mohammed Ibrahim. I thought he was I, a great UDFA. I think he yeah. makes the team. I think he makes a team and Netflix ends up on the practice squad. I can see it. Well, guys, I've got to travel. Jeremy, guys, Good to thanks see you. for having Thanks me. for hopping in. 
Yeah, thanks for popping on. See you. Yes, well, anytime. Appreciate. We're doing. We're we're here every day, man. Uh, during the week, let's talk some football, brother. Hey, man, I'm free Monday. I'll be there. Well, I'll cool. be here too. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, Jeremy. Right. I didn't know you. I didn't know you had a protege. Uh, he has been a part of sideline sports with doing a show called Basket Bros, talking about old school basketball versus the new basketball. Ah. And uh, he's been on the South Florida Tribune, and he got booted because he couldn't be uh, mature enough on there. So I kind of took him under my wing and had him as a guest on my Wednesday's NFL shows. And from listening to me, he started piping in on the Friday shows. Cool. All right. Well, now we have these bear fans in here or, or bear fan in here. So we got to think of something that we can do here. Let me see. I got a little screen that I'm going to share right here. Where are we at? Is it this one? Yeah. All right. This was thrown up by Tom Novans from the Novans Corporation right here with a uh, Never forget Noodle Arm Jared Goff doubled Justin Fields in passing yards last year. So let, let let's get a let's get some comments on this right here. <laughs> Justin Fields also had more rushing yards than Jamal Williams. Ooh, yeah, but yeah, but, yeah, but I, I I I I would I would hate to see. Well, Justin Fields got most of those yards. It's not because of design runs. He was running his ass off from those defensive linemen and linebackers. So that's that's the main thing I said this year is that I think Justin Fields should have more design runs for him. But, you know, RPO is no more. So it, it's going to be tough. I think because Lamar Jackson, his first year, he was all run. But his second year, he started passing the ball more and he was successful. So I'm thinking, I'm hoping with all the weapons and our offensive line is beefing up, I'm thinking uh, Justin Fields, he's going to have a, you know, a decent passing year this year. So that's just my intake on that. Right on. So let's go to a Lion fan right here. How about you, Jeremy? What, what do you think about this uh, this post that, by Tom Novan? I wanted to make that bigger real quick so I could actually read it because I don't have my gla reading glasses today. Can oh, I okay. I'll put, I'll put, yeah, hold on a minute. Boom. There you go. There you go. I can try to make it bigger. Let me see if I can. Yep. Don't. Yeah. I, I don't expect that Justin Fields will throw for that much anyways, because it is more of a running offense, period. He has more weapons. I expect him to do better if he learns how to read instead of running, because you guys can say he was running for his life. But the pocket was held for 2.7 seconds, which was ninth best in Thank the NFL you. last year. Thank you. So that meant he was a one read or a two read and run quarterback. Right. Well, okay. we had, hey, Jeremy, we had, you know, with Mooney's injury and stuff like that, you know, he doesn't like, he liked to favor Mooney, which he can't do that. You got to, we have a, you know, we'll see this year. But like I said a couple weeks ago, is that he he doesn't like throwing the tight ends. He has to get Cole Komet and new addition Tanyan involved this year. That that like I said, that's going to be the my dark dark horse this year is the tight ends, and he I, has to get the ball to those guys. But wasn't Cole Komet number the one leading target receiver? Last year. Cole Komet yeah. was number one target last year, and I don't care if you add an offensive line or DJ Moore, the guy couldn't hit water from a boat. <laughs> that's why jared goff doubled his total as tom pointed out in the post it yeah he he didn't have a lot of offensive line but you know what we've seen great quarterbacks overcome those things before and at least salvage a winning season uh i, I think the kid's in what? trouble I, I i wish him the best i'm scared of the kid and everybody i've been very uh vocal about the potential what this kid could be is very scary for the NFC North because if he can get his accuracy down, I mean, the kid's an incredible athlete. We saw what he did at Columbus University. Um, the, the guy can throw the ball. He's just froze on us. Hey, they do that to me yeah. all the time. time let, with let, I know, I know, like I said, I know Cole Komet was their leading receiver, but up this guy's it, 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 it was just lack of weapons. I mean, like I said a couple weeks ago, too, on the show, is that when we, if we get and when we get to the 20, the tight ends got to be the key 
like I said, when we had Jimmy Graham, when we had Trey Burton, Zach Miller, that's all our offense was within the 20 yard line getting in the end zone is throwing to the tight ends. Unless you had, again, Alshon Jeffrey or Brandon Marshall, we would hit them in the end zone. Those tight ends are key within the 20 yard line. That's what I'm talking about. Right on. Uh, I want to get a dub's thought on this. Everybody pay attention for the delay right here, but what is your thoughts on uh, Justin Fields versus uh, this Tom Novans the comment on this post right here? When I look at that, it only reminds me about how much more work that uh, Justin Fields has to do. Like when I watch the kid play, I'm not going to say he's not a good thrower, but when I've seen big plays from him, it's usually going to be more on the outside. And I wonder what is the percentage for Justin Fields targeting in the middle as opposed to outside on the numbers when it comes to him throwing the football. And it's always seems like he'll he'll normally go for the and when it comes to him throwing, it's usually going to be the vomit vomit pass. Like we see more from from him in terms of arm strength more so than we see arm accuracy on the field. I like that. That's a good. That's a great take right there. Um, and I, I and I'm gonna just take the elephant out in the room. Everybody kind of spoke on this, and I want to come to the other side of this argument, which is the Jared Goff side, and it kind of lends to something that I've been saying a lot this off season, which is that the people love a running quarterback. It's more exciting to see a, a, a running quarterback, and Justin Fields has all of this excitement going to this year because he's exciting. He gets out of the side of the pocket, and then he likes to run. And a lot of people like that type of thing. But what is undersold in this league is what Jared Goff does, where he just sits back in the pocket and quietly has a very, very good throwing year, and that he still gets crapped on because what, whatever. He's got playmakers or whatever reason you think that is not his ability of why he's getting this all of these yards. So that's what I see with these two, because we want to talk about how bad Justin Fields is going to be rather than how good Jared Goff was all last season. That's a great point. Um, But we can move oh, on. Man. We have a couple of people asking us to move on right here. Tina says, can we go in and can we talk about Mims? But I don't know if we can go in and talk about Mims because we have bear down Mike, who is also in the back. So we have, Two Bear fans, one Packer fan, and two Lions fans. So, uh, Bear Down Mike, I will let you bring a, a topic to the conversation if you want to. Well, I was, uh, I, when Woody was talking about Justin Fields, did you guys realize nine players in the NFL, nine quarterbacks threw for over 4,000 yards? Did you see how many throws they made up in the 500s? Justin Fields only threw ball 319 times. Right. So you guys think that this was a running offense last season with the additions of the wide receivers, that's going to go up 200 and plus. Yeah. Throws yeah it, was, it was a running offense, even on passing plays. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's a good there's, point. That, I mean, that, there's oh. plays where he looked like he wanted to throw, but he had to tuck it and run because the oh, guy uh, wasn't paying attention. Oh, hey, Dub's oh, got something. You know, excuse me. Yeah, and uh, Russell, if I was going to bring up something else you could speak about, you mentioned the case about dual-threat quarterbacks, and I'm thinking that's one of the factors that could speak volumes about why uh, running backs are not getting paid as much anymore. One of the reasons Ooh. since running backs are getting little to no pay nowadays. It, it definitely could contribute to it. Um, w really what we have is a, you know, the, with the salary cap, with the era that we're in, it does create parity, but it does make it so you have to draft a, a lot better. And if you're going to pay these quarterbacks, you're not going to be able to pay the running backs. And if you're paying a running back, well, then you probably aren't going to be paying your quarter. You have to decide which type of players or what time you're, you you want to be hitting on those draft picks, right? You need these guys on rookie deals in order to win in the NFL anymore. You can't go into free agency. You can't pay your quarterback $60 million unless your name's Patrick Mahomes, who he is a unicorn. Nobody is like him right now. He's already transcended, you know, his abilities a couple ah, of times. Here we go. Let's see what his passer rating was over a middle, the middle by next gen stats at five yards or less. Justin Fields was 54.8. Wow. At 10, 
to 15 yards, it was 96.7. So that's just under the safeties. That's actually pretty good. Between the safeties, 0, 0.0 passer rating. Wow. So he didn't, yeah, but that means he didn't throw, they didn't scheme or he never threw the ball there. No, it says 38 attempts over the middle. Zero. It tells me how many attempts. Zero for 38. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that is... now down the hash marks. Over 15 yards, that's any ball through the air. It's talking about through the air, not where they caught it. Uh, 85.9 at 10 to 15, it was 125.8, which is very good. At five yards or less, 77.5. On screen passes behind the line, it was only a 60.4 passer rating. Wow. On the right side. Now let's go to the left side. Over 15 yards, 109.7. 10 to 15, 116.1. Five to, five to zero yards was 85.9. And behind the line of scrimmage, screens to the left was a 95.4. So he throws very good to the blind side for most quarterbacks. But isn't he, is he left-handed? No. No. Okay. So he can throw behind him better than he can throw in front of him. Holy cow. That's an interesting stat, Jeremy. Thanks for that. Russ, I'm up against it. Can I sign off? Yes, let me bring, let me go get the let me go get my little promo here for you, and then you can go ahead and do that. No, I, I gotta ask Mike something. You going to pick up Addison? Are you the Uber driver? No, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. One. That's you know, fantastic. You know, a guy named Woody should never throw insults to anyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the NFC North Open, and then he goes out. Oh, oh stupid. Oh, let's see if you can cut in here. I'm going to give him another crack at it. The producer, Russell Wayne. God bless you all. <laughs> you God too. bless you. Hey, take it easy, Mike. Have a great day. And, hey, he is the illustrious host of our NFC North Open Mic. And, uh, and since all that cut out, I might as well just go ahead and say it. Every Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you did hear Mike say it, then you just get to hear it twice. Leave your feelings at home. We want to hurt your feelings. We want you. We want to rip on your favorite team. Seventy-five percent of your takes are wrong just because you're on this show, and that's just uh, that's just the way that it is. And we appreciate it. And we appreciate each and every one of you coming out and uh, you know watching talking heads talk about football in July. How how do you like that? That gives like a five. You like you like you like you like you like that. Before we sign off here, because I know it's coming soon, I wanted to mention the fact that Jameer Gibbs signed his contract on the eve of training camp with a four-year, seventeen point eight five, complete, fully guaranteed contract with a nine point four million signing bonus. That's becoming more popular, isn't it? Like these fully guaranteed. Rookie deals, I mean. But not why. for running backs, which leans towards what Brad Holmes said to Peter Schrager. He's not considered a running back here. He's considered an offensive weapon. He's going to be used more at wide receiver than at running back. You guys think he's going to be used as a gadget player? No, he's just going to be a target machine. I think yeah. that he, I mean, Debo Samuel, I mean, the these new hybrid wide receivers that are out there that people are using like that, you know, you're, you, you're even like I'm on Ross St. Brown. They've been using like gadget player. They've been giving him handoffs. I, I think that you're going to see Jameer Gibbs and Montgomery out there a lot. Both, both of them. You'll see. Especially Gibbs the first the six slot. weeks while Wilson Williams is suspended. I mean, I, I really think that we're going to keep extra running backs because I think that, I, he he will identify as a running back. I think that he'll have the running back tag. But as far as your fantasy football teams, uh, definitely Jameer Gibbs is the best rookie running back for you to take dynasty wise, especially if you're in a PPR league. I'll give that little bit of tidbit for you. If you get a point per reception, this kid's going to get eight to 10 receptions a game, even if they are just dump offs. But they plan on throwing it to him often. And uh, yeah, he's a playmaker. That's what he is. So let's get into some of these comments right here. And I'm not ready to sign off yet. I okay. mean, I didn't know. I just wanted to get that out there that that was done. 
Well, Mike's kind of like the middle, the you know, like in, in the middle of the broadcast. I used to just go till 12, but it ends up being 1230. Um, but here we go. Uh, we have a Packer fan in here, a dub. Is there anything Packer related? Because I don't know if you guys have had anything new that's really happened. You want to touch on anything you want to want, want these well, clowns to be able to answer to? <laughs> well, the only thing that would be new and more recent has to be a USFL QB that we signed. Yep. Okay. Birmingham. Alex Magoo. I mean, yep. Mago. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So what do you think of him over maybe Sean Clifford? I mean, I like Sean Clifford. I thought that was a good – you know, late round developmental quarterback. Well, when it comes to this U.S. QB, he, I heard about what he's been able to do down there, a former MVP in his own right. But for me, I look at this as a guy who's just coming in as far as bringing competition to the QB position, as far as somebody who could fight for a roster spot, as far as that uh, second stringer behind Jordan Love. I thought at best he'd be just another camp body who just adds competition to the QB spot as far as somebody who could back up Jordan Love. Yeah, I like that take. And now since they have that new rule that you're allowed to actually have three quarterbacks on the, the active roster, and um, yeah. that's cool. That, that's but cool. Sean, but, Sean, but Sean Clifford, he played for, what, Penn State? Yeah. yeah. Doesn't count. Nope. Uh, I mean, well, if you actually watched him play against some of those defenses last year, Sean Clifford was pretty good under pressure, being able to, like, throw the ball right as he was getting hit and stuff. Uh, I was always impressed with him, and Penn State isn't known for really having great quarterbacks, but he, he stood out as one of the better Penn State quarterbacks to me. But, I mean. I'll, compa I'll, ca I'll compare him to Kerry Collins. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Carry, carry, I mean, <laughs> un, under underrated dude right there. That dude played into his forties and, and played on really, really good teams. And you know, these good game manager guys, I, and, and I put golf in that category. I put Kirk cousins in that category. These guys that just are just your pros, you know, you're not like, like I said, you don't want to see any of these guys out of the pocket. <laughs> it's like, Nope. Don't want to see any of that. I just want to see you in the pocket. I want to see you protected, and I want to see you distributing the ball. Oh, amen. There we go. Hey, sorry that there's not a ton of news as far as the. So we, we we're probably are going to go back into this Denzel Mims things because this is what Tina wants to talk about, and uh, I think this is a good signing for the Detroit Lions. I mean, you can't really call it a bad signing because then really do or, or a good bad trade because they really didn't give anything up for it <laughs> so just a six round pick for it yeah and we but got it's, a seventh round back uh, i was misspoken spoken yesterday because the way the thing was worded we got mims in a conditional seventh rounder and they get a conditional sixth rounder so it's just a swapping of a late pick sixth round and seventh round there's not that much difference anymore between them yeah and you're paying nothing for it, really. And it's a conditional six-round pick, too. So if he doesn't even make the roster, that he they just release him and nobody gets anything. They don't get nothing. We don't get nothing. It's it, There's really zero risk in Whoa. just bringing a speedster in. And, and that's all he really is. I mean, I don't want to oversell. Like, we have some bona fide number two wide receiver now or something like that. I mean, he's really fast really fast six foot three he fits the build of what we need while jameson williams is gone but i mean i'm not gonna call home about this guy i'm not i'm not <laughs> i mean i'm not gonna die on a hill well, saying like, yeah mims is gonna be the next big thing i mean he's I had mean, over uh what is it 33 catches on 42 attempts uh over his career of catchable passes if you count the drops and they include balls that hit you in the back of the shoulder pads or the top of your helmet is a catchable ball <laughs> you guys know that those count as drops back shoulder pat they back so uh, shoulder catches man they count i know yeah but uh <laughs> when you say say this is the list of your starting quarterbacks you've had thrown to you over the last three three seasons Sam Pause, Darnold. Me... it's my quarterback zach wilson it's my quarterback Chris Strebler. 
It's my quarterback. Washed up Joe Flacco. It's my quarterback. Mike White. It's my quarterback. And last but not least, whale shit on the bottom of the ocean, Josh Johnson. It's my quarterback. And so I, I, I say Mike White's the best quarterback out of all of them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Believe it or not, the best, my quarterback. the best chemistry he had out of all of them was Chris Strebler. Jesus. <laughs> so needless to say, Mims has not really had a real good shot at this thing called the, the football life. <laughs> and um, he had a defensive head coach, which means they don't develop offensive talent. If you're not producing, they just move on. You know, I'm one of these people like that believe that this was a bad, it was more bad of a trade for New York than it was a good trade for Detroit. Yeah. It, it's like, what are you doing? You, you're giving up Elijah Moore in a trade for like a, like a trade down from the second to the third round. And then you give up Denzel Mims for like a conditional seventh round pick. Why? Oh, because we signed Alan Lazard and Randall Cobb. So what? <laughs> I can't even believe I picked these guys to be my dark horse Super Bowl pick. And then you go out and do all this crap. It's Rogers' wish list. Yeah, I mean, why are you why are you bowing down to Aaron Rodgers? <laughs> because that's what GMs do. I know, I know. Packers well, did it for a long time. No, oh, the AC Adam couldn't even handle that conversation. Uh, oh, no, it's all right. It's all right. I mean, he's well, he's handling I, I gotta his get going, business. Guys. I know. I'm I gotta going. Get going. You guys have a good uh, one. All right, too, bear, down. bear down, Mike. It's great to have you on here. Thank you. See you guys. Wouldn't that be something that, uh, just like when Stafford left Detroit, he went to the Rams and won a Super Bowl. Imagine if Aaron Rodgers wins a Super Bowl in New York. Oh, man, shit's going to hit the fan, I tell you. Hey, well, I still like what uh, mm -hmm. Vanessa, for lack of not knowing his name yesterday, he came, he came in and asked, what happens if the Jets and the Lions make the Super Bowl and Mims catches the touchdown pass to beat Rodgers and the Jets? Whoa. <laughs> and I was like, "Wow!" And that's a that's a Packer fan asking that question. You know, that's that, a that just blew hey, that's mind. a that, that's a stretch of a it Super Bowl. It's a stretch. It's a stretch. <laughs> I, I'm what not a gonna compliment! Lie. What wow. a compliment! Like I was just like, "Wow, you you are a Packer fan, and you said the words Super Bowl and Lions in the same sentence. And that's a, that's amazing." <laughs> well, I gotta I gotta I gotta get the article. I I read an article yesterday. That uh, I don't know where it was, but they said they put a percentages in, and they picked Detroit to win the Super Bowl, just on percentages wise. I, I got to get the site; I'll send it to you. But I read it, and I was like, "Crap!" And I lost it. I was like, "Where the hell is it?" Because I was going to mention it today on the show and show you. But yeah, so there's something to be excited about in Detroit this year. Yeah, we want to be excited, but uh, as Lions I fans, like, we've I like always what Jared Goff said. We we've learned how to taper our expectations. And and sometimes you don't know whether to continue to taper them or just to follow that little good feeling down the wormhole because we've been we've been hurt so many times, Woody. We we know. We we know what it's like to hurt on the inside and and feel all good and warm and fuzzy about. But, the team. but see, say say if the Bears were you know voted to pick the Super Bowl, you know I don't get too excited because I don't get my hopes up because when it doesn't happen, I won't be too devastated. Right. So hopefully, I know Detroit Lion fans, you know, excited, you know, winning division and stuff like that. But don't kill yourselves if you guys don't make it to the big game. That's what I do. I don't get my hopes up at all. So if it doesn't happen, I don't get too uh, upset about it. Well, it's going to be hard because when you go in and you, you play Kansas City and then you play a team that you that beat you last year in a shootout, Apparently. that you, they we didn't even get an off or a defensive stop in that whole game. So I'm pretty sure we're going to get a defensive stop in this game against Seattle. So if by some miracle the Lions actually start out two and zero. The Kool Aid's going to be flowing. <laughs> it's going to be flowing in the Detroit area because they'll be favored in every game in Vegas for the rest after. of the season. After that, like, yep. If they take out Kansas City, see the the bad part is is I don't believe they should be because of how the Kansas City defense has played the last four years straight. 
well, say what like, you want, but they start out slow. They I, average giving up twenty eight to thirty five points a game. See, I don't, I don't take the first. I take the first game as like a, a first game. Last year we beat San Francisco the first game. Right. Y you know what I mean. So, <laughs> Bears weren't favored every game afterwards. Was that when but, you hurt Lance? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> that that was the that was the rain game when the Bears would score a touchdown they would do a swan dive from the twenty yard line they reached the end zone that's oh, now okay. so that that you know the, the first game you know we play Green Bay you know say you know say if the Bears win yeah I'll be excited because it's a division game but it's not it, it's just the first game. Like I said, we beat San Francisco last year. I didn't think we're, you know, that was one of our three wins. Did I think we're going to uh, win a division after that first win? Not at all. I, I just take the first game as a first game. Yeah, but there were some Bear fans that were on the, on no. the Super Bowl Ryan Poles uh, hype train. Well, but, of, of, of course, of course. That, that yeah, uh-huh. Y'all just didn't know. Yeah, yeah, right. You were all sleeping on these bears. Like, oh man, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, may, what are, who are you talking about? Oliver? Richard God, Oliver? Uh, well, <laughs> I just remember the huddle last year was just flooded with a yeah. bunch of Mooney as a number one wide receiver. Like all of this crazy stuff. And I was just like, wow, that is a lot of because we, we do the same thing. In Detroit, we we hype our you know fifth and seventh round picks, and the, right. here's this guy from free agency that we got that no one knows about. We we, we do that too. Every right. team does that. Every but, home. But yeah, yeah, but yeah, I was like I said, I was excited, happy that we beat the 49ers because 49ers are saying, hey, Super Bowl run, this and that. If Detroit beats Kansas City on Week One, yes, be be excited. But don't think you're going to go undefeated the rest of the year or, you know, stuff like that. Just, just uh, like I said, I'm realistic. <laughs> so, but I would be excited for you to, if you guys beat Kansas City because I know we won't. <laughs> well, you know, dude, it is the NFL. It's like, to me, the the, the teams that surprise. That's the same goals every given Sunday, right? Yeah, that's what I said. Uh, that's when I was telling Russell. That's why they play the games. You know, who knows? The Bears can go. 17 and oh is it likely hell no but you never know that it, it might happen who knows so it's to me it's like teams like atlanta are scary like teams like houston their running game yeah atlanta's running well, game well it's like a lot of these these teams like rebuild a couple years ago right so they yeah. these teams have used first round draft picks on high-end offense and defensive play especially houston houston's one of those teams that you got a whole bunch of second and third year guys that are coming in after those Deshaun Watson picking twice in the first round, two years in a row, they got some talent on that team. And then you drop CJ Stroud into that. That could be a team to look at as a dark horse in that division with Jacksonville and Tennessee that everyone loves to talk about. Yeah. I'm Jacksonville will be in the, I, I, I picked Jacksonville already to be in the playoffs this year. Absolutely. T. Uh, and I look I, at Jacksonville to build to still win that division as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm still playing around with next gen stats, and they have a stat in here called catchable passes. Guess what team had the 32nd ranked catchable passes thrown? Let me guess, Jeremy. Is the fan in here? Yep. Chicago Bears. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I just want to. I just. I, I love the way you point that out. And uh, this isn't uh, trash talk here. This is uh, talking. I'm not trashing. I, it's a stat. It's a stat. It's a stat. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, I, I, like I said, the Bears, uh, Justin Fields, you know, with the weapons, offensive line beef up. There's no excuse this year how right. he, he can't at least throw over 3,000 yards. Now, 4,000 is a little bit of a stretch, where, which I'm, he says, oh, I'm definitely throwing 4,000 yards this year. Uh, I'm like, the. Uh, Okay, three thousand is good. I think he, like I said, he's going to do a lot better. His rushing yards are going to be up there, but not as high as last year's. Yeah, I mean, you're hoping. You're, you're I'm hoping because yeah. you want balance. Yeah. And I'm hoping for not an injury either, because like I said, we got great old Nathan Peterman and then PJ Walker. So, yeah. and I was going to say <laughs> another another thing you want to. 
want to say and hope for out of Justin Fields is that he limits his turnovers too. Like he he has been very high on that the past two seasons for you Bears. Right. Yeah. He's uh he's like I mean you know how Jay Cutler he he broke all the Bears passing records, but Jay Cutler liked to force it a lot. So and then he would throw in the interceptions and stuff like that. Hey. I know you're running quarterback. If you're getting chased and you can't get out of the pocket or pass a line of scrimmage, throw the ball out of bounds. There was a lot of those last year's as well. Him taking the sack, throw the ball out of bounds and yep. go to the next down. And 90% of his fumbles were when he was running outside the pocket. Right. Yep. Yeah, I mean, he when it comes with a, a lot of guys do this in the NFL because when you don't have a great team around you, you feel like you have to do more. Then, and Russell, is there any way you can bring that last comment up? Which one? The one about the Bears uh, uh, with the no defense, but they 10. There you go. Right there. Sarah. Uh, it wasn't that one. It was another one. Uh, there was a guy that just uh, put the comment in. Something about Bears. Yeah, there you go. 10 games last year were no defense. That's That's a good point, too, because our schedule is in our favor this year a little bit. And our defense is a lot better with the addition of the linebackers and our uh, CBs are gelling like Gordon and Brisker. What I said, we have to get an edge rusher because we were last in sacks last year. But that was a good point. And yeah. our schedule is in a little bit more favored than last year as well. Yeah, Br Brisker is a really good. Yes, even though he was from Penn State. Yes, I know. I and, 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 yeah, well, Penn State's notoriously good for defense. If, uh, you, if you go to if you go to Penn State for or Iowa for defense in the Big Ten, you're okay. Just don't go there for offense. Yeah, when Penn State beats Michigan and Ohio State and stops playing Akron and you know stuff like that, and they start beating Ohio State and Michigan, I'll turn my head. But they they can't beat them worth crap. So that's why. But Brisker and Gordon, they are gelling. And hopefully after this year, you know, uh, this year Jalen Johnson has a better year because they're talking about it, you know, if they're going to keep him or extend or extend his contract or, you know, get rid of him next year. So hopefully that works out. We got to get rid of Vildor. He, he was just terrible for us last year. So and Eddie Jackson said he's going to have his best year as a safety this year. So I like to action speaks louder than words. Yeah. A action Jackson. Yep. Get it going, Action Jackson. Put some action behind that Jackson. Let's Absolutely. And, but I'll give Brisker. I think he is the best young safety. I thought he was the best safety out of last year's class, and and he proved it in yep. uh, in the stat department. I think Kirby's coming up on him, but Kirby's uh, Kirby's good good pickup for the line. But Brisker was more solid throughout the entire year. Right. Um, I mean, <laughs> Kirby Joseph was Aaron Rodgers' daddy and really not much else after that. <laughs> right. No, I hear you. Oh, but uh, I, have to, I, I have to get going, but I want to say, you know, House Hall Report, we uh, do our shows Wednesday nights. Uh, I, I say Eastern time because that Eastern is the, the best time to have. Seventh... <laughs> 7.30 <laughs> Central Standard Time. And then this Sunday, uh, it's going to be 11.30 Central uh, Standard Time. This Sunday is our first show. Come and join us, comment, and do whatever you want to do. I love hey, it. Woody, so, hey, you out, you what's that? Before you hop out, what you should wish for is, regardless of the yards, that he improves his uh, completion percentage to over 60. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I think, like I said, I'm optimistic. That he's going to have a better year. <laughs> Did you really cut him off? I didn't cut him off. He cut, oh, he cut uh, himself off, but you got to stop asking people um, questions right after they're done. Like, like three times, three times this week, I tried to close the show out and I'm like, all right, God bless. Well, I want more thing. And it's like, he was like, hey, here's my show. Peace out. One more question, Woody. <laughs> it's like, dude, he's trying to get out of here. Poor guy. I, but I, I actually didn't – I did not do that. I feel like I keep on kicking people out, and it's not my fault. No, oh, it looks like it. That's what I'm saying, the way they – Gosh. Out. Oh, man. But now we have two Lion fans and a Packer fan. We haven't even – and A-Dub's been such a good sport here just being on the show and we haven't really even 
been talking about much. Um, they got a great young, I, I think, you know, Dobbs, Reed, and, and, and Watson is a one, two, three wide receivers right there. You got a good young wide receiver core that not a lot of people know about. So that may be able to help out Jordan Love to get on a, a, a quarterback tip right here. So is that the most exciting part? Are you excited more about Jordan Love or your defense and running? For the most part, I have to say it could be a mix of both. Like currently, when it comes to Jordan Love, I am trying to see if he has truly inherited everything he seen and experienced and uh, absorbed from Rodgers. Like, will he take all of that and actually be the quarterback that Green Bay needs and wants him to be? And when it comes to the defense, expectations are very high on it. Like, we have. Like for this defense, everybody has said it. We have eight first round draft picks on this defense, and the talent is there for where it should be somewhere between between the top 10, 10 out there. I'm trying yep. to see what that work come out accordingly. Yeah, and you have it, it all comes back to that defensive coordinator. I and I think mm-hmm. that is the biggest question for you guys is can he get it together? Can Joe Barry finally get this, all of this talent all together and, you know, make them better than the 21st ranked defense with all that talent on there? Yep. It's all about the play calling as well as playing to your personnel strengths, strengths as well. Like if these got whoever is good, good for uh, when it comes to our secondary, the majority of those guys are better better suited for man press coverages as opposed to playing zone. So Mm -hmm. play to that kind of strength. And then when it comes to your linebackers, if their strength is best built around coverage or the run stop, plates have plate have plays called where you do that. Just play to your personnel strengths is what I would suggest with Joe Perry in terms of your play calling. Right. And I think that they will be able to do that. And, and that's why I think that Green Bay, I, I, to me, is the the second place team in the division because they are going to be able to play that defense. And with the running game that they have with Dylan and Jones, they're going to be able to play ball control and their defense is going to be able to stop games. They'll be able to, you know, do that at the end where I feel like Rodgers was more of a, you know, woohoo, I can score in two seconds. And uh, he can run a long drive, but that wasn't really his thing. He he could kill you with the big plays and stuff like that, where now I think the o- offensive coordinator is going to make it so they're just going to be handing the ball off a lot and, and playing for less possessions and not big stats. True, but at the same time, another thing I touched on before is Rodgers being gone means more control of the play calling goes to Matt LaFleur like like, like uh, what Mike once said before, the kind of offense Green Bay ran wasn't completely Matt LaFleur's offense. Right. It what Part of it was, but Rodgers always altered the offense to have plays of his own that he likes to run, do things his way. But you're not going to see that now since we have Jordan Love here. Like, everything he does would be according to Matt LaFleur's scheme. Wow. But, I mean, that's crazy to me. Like, if I'm a Green Bay fan – that I'm looking at that and, and you you know, you're wondering if it's the chicken or the egg, right? You know, Mm -hmm. is it LeFleur or is it, or is it Rogers? And, and really no one is going to know that until they see Jordan love in this offense to see if Matt LeFleur can, you know, coach his way into keeping this being a good offense. So that's, Mm -hmm. that's a, that's a good question for, for green Bay fan. And, Gosh, you, the the first week you get Chicago, mm-hmm. and last year you were able to defend Justin Fields pretty easily. I mean, it, he really didn't have any type of answer for any of the Green Bay defense. So I don't see why they would just expect with Nate Davis and you know it, drafting a first round tackle, adding a wide receiver like that. It's just gonna all of a sudden be better because you guys got better on defense too. Well, the the big question mark for us is going to be how well do we match up with their defense given that 
now you don't have to see Rodgers anymore. You got a new face of QB and Jordan Love. And to me, the unknown known element can work to our advantage. Like you may you may not know what you're gonna see in Jordan Love. Like only thing you can go off of with Jordan Love is the small sample size of what he did before he became the full time starter that he will be this year. Right. Like you don't really you don't really know how to scheme for him because you didn't see him play that much just yet. And that's huge. In the, today's NFL, tape is everything. Like if you have something on tape, that's what I mean. That's why I think the advantage for the Lions with Jameer Gibbs and Laporta. The biggest thing is is that entire offense is ran exactly like it was last year. Quarterback, uh, all the offensive linemen are blocking in the correct, opening up the correct lanes. None of that changes. The only thing that changes is you take out Jamal Williams, you stick in a guy that's probably about twice as fast as he is and can break tackles and can catch the ball. You take out DeAndre Swift, you put in David Montgomery, which is I think is a comparable I mean, that's, you know, take one out, put the one in, and, and David Montgomery may even be more durable than DeAndre Swift ever was. So even if it's the same in talent right there, it's you don't have anything. You don't have any tape on that. You don't have any tape on Jordan Love running that offense and running it with Christian Watson and, and, and you know, throwing the fade with – Romeo Dobbs. We don't have that. So that is an advantage. That's a very good point. You look, you look, you look, you like that. That gets four. There we go. Wait, you have any thoughts on this, Jeremy? No, I mean, I pretty much agree with all of it. Uh, but like I said, it's good. It's going to come down to coaching either way. When you have a young QB that hasn't had a lot of experience, it's 100% going to come down to the coaching and play calling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh man, I think that we're getting to the end. I think that we're reaching at this point at the at the end right here. John, uh, let me see what John Dorn says, and I'll see if I want to end, end this. Sorry, guys, my phone overheated. <laughs> okay, I'm glad that I didn't, uh, Woody. I'm so glad that you realized that your phone overheated, and then I did not kick you out <laughs> because, <laughs> because it definitely looked like I kicked you out. And I'm glad that you had that comment on there. <laughs> you need my card to pay the bill. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I gotta go. I oh go. gosh. Hey, thanks for uh, being on the show, A Dub. You're welcome anytime, brother. You have a great All right, day. See, see y'all later. Oh man, man. It, it it seemed like everybody had a little bit of a you know a little thing today. It was kind of a, but that's all right. So what I wanted to do right here, I wanted to thank everybody for being on here with us today. I, I, I'm glad that you got through all of our technical difficulties and everything right here. I do want everybody to realize where we are broadcasting because we got a lot of support from people. Detroit Lions News. Thank you, Joe Chap, allowing us to broadcast into your platform so we can give you some good Detroit Lions content. And please go like and follow our page, Detroit Lion Villain Squad. Uh, we content 365 days a year. We, we put over every podcaster that comes on here. So whether you're supporting the Chicago bears with Mike, the bear fan, or you're supporting, supporting, uh, the, the Packers with bill, the Packer fan, or if Matt, you're supporting the Minnesota Vikings for some odd reason, Oh, like Sarah. And we appreciate Sarah coming on and representing the Vikings every day, but we don't have a, a page to go with that yet. And then Smoke and Jeremy B here, why don't you give yourself a plug? Well, you, you find my my content at Kneecap Biting with the Detroit Lions. You can find my writings at the South Florida Tribune.com. And you can also find me on the South Florida Tribune YouTube channel where I do multiple podcasts weekly until the off season is over because I just hate off season. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. To, to, to me, I love off season because it gives us a chance to really look at all of these things. I'm talking about that lull. <laughs> yeah, the, the lull is tough, but I'll tell you what. We here at the main event 365 and over there with uh, uh, biting kneecaps, Detroit Lions style, we are committed to 365 days a year of some form of content coming out either on the page or in some kind of live form. We made it through the entire draft. 
all like 120 hours of it. It was the marathon. Thank you, Ken Doby, for that too. And uh, we appreciate you guys coming live here every single day. We're doing this during the week, 11 a.m. on the weekdays, phone sessions with me, your host, Russell Wayne. And we invite everybody to do that. And then on uh, NFC North Open Mic, that is where it gets a little bit more risque, right? 7 p.m. Eastern, we viewer-driven topics. Don't bring your feelings or anything like that because we love to talk a little bit of trash. And, uh, and, and as always... God bless you guys. We love the fact that you are avid football fans that come on here every single day, especially July 21st. Next week, we get to talk a little bit about some of that training camp right there. Hey, keep loving football. The hell with basketball. The hell with baseball. God bless each and every one of you. From Russell Wayne, Main Event 365. Take it easy, one pride.